Hello, welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick, we're playing Stationers. Now today we're going to be taking a bit of a look at, uh, at pipes and pipe flows. We're really just the, the atmospheric flow around your whole base and a bit of inside and outside. Now I think this pipes, the atmospherics of it is something where Rocket Works has probably clearly been a bit of a favourite there with everyone. So it seems to be what they've put the most work into. Uh, having said that, it does does do a fairly accurate job of uh, recreating what you find in reality. But of course, it is a video game. You do want the game to run at more than one frame per second, so they have had to make a few compromises. Um, so it's not by any means perfect in what it does. So we're going to run a few experiments out here to find out a few little tricks on how it works uh, what compromises have been made and some little little quirks that may may have given you troubles along your time so we'll do a few experiments we'll see what works we'll see what doesn't now as I say this is quite an extensive topic the whole atmospheric thing so today we're just going to be looking at the gas flow uh, so enough of that said uh, as far as I know it I mean I don't know everything about this but from what I've observed the atmospheric seems to be broken up into atmospheric objects. So understanding them is probably the key to understanding how most of it works. But uh, enough chit chat, let's get on with it. Now one of the main things we've got here is, so say the game is broken up into atmospheric objects. Now pipe itself is an atmospheric object. Now it has pressure, volume and quantity. Now, but the thing to remember with as I say, it's compromises have to be made to make the game run at speed. So that is one atmospheric object. That is still one atmospheric object. It doesn't matter how many pipes you put on. Well, in reality, the longer the pipe, there should be more resistance to its flow. But to make the game run, they've just said that is one atmospheric object. So it doesn't matter which part of that pipe I look at everything is always exactly the same. We can do a couple of experiments just to prove that. Okay, so here's the first little experiment. I just have one very long pipe snaking around. Pipe analyzer at one end, pipe analyzer at the other end. Now, when I've got an active vent at one end, so and we see we've got the displays here for each pipe analyzer. Now, if I pump gas in one end it should take some time to flow to the other end in reality but let's see how we go here we switch it on we find both displays are moving at exactly the same time because that's one of the compromises they've had to make in developing the game is they can't calculate every little length length of pipe and the ability for the gas to flow to one length to the other or the game would just be a complete dinosaur and not move so that's one of the compromises they've made a pipe is perfect all the way along no matter how long it is every point of that pipe will be exactly the same doesn't matter if you have different branches on it a hundred different branches coming off that they are all the same it is all one atmospheric object if I now break that and put something else in the middle and put the valve in there Right, now that valve is open, it's all joined together. Is it now one atmospheric object? Oops. Look at that one, 136 in that one, and 61 moles in that one there. Interesting, they're now two atmospheric objects because that valve designates a break in the objects, and now there's two of them. So now if I go back to our valves, we switch it on, you see that they're moving up differently. That is to designate there is two objects. Now there is a flow between one object and the other object, which is now driven by the pressure difference between the two of them. So what's driving that one is I'm pumping into one active pump, into one atmospheric object, and then just a passive join between the other two objects. So you get a bit of a lag there between the two of them. So our next little experiment we've got here has to do with pressure, the relationship between pressure, volume and quantity. Now I have 10 lengths of pipe here. They are 250 kilopascals or 251 kilopascals almost. They have, there is 141 moles of carbon dioxide. There's a couple of moles of other ones as well, but we'll just look at the carbon dioxide. 
So in 10 lengths of pipe there, I believe that each of those lengths of pipe is 100 litres. So if we were to pump 100 litres out of there, we can expect to get 10% of what it is. We get 14 moles of carbon dioxide. So that's fine because the pressure, pressure 250. But now if we move a couple of lengths of pipe, we've now got seven lengths of pipe. We still have 141 moles of carbon dioxide but we now have 358 kilopascals. Once again, we keep going. We're down to five lengths of pipe. It's half a length of the pipe. So we've doubled our pressure. We still have the same quantity, still 141 moles. But now the difference being, if we pumped out 100 litres of that, we would get double the quantity we would have added the last pipe. So 100 litres of that would give you 282 moles of 28 0.2 moles of carbon dioxide. So if you need to pump a greater quantity from a volume pump, by increasing the pressure, you will get a greater quantity. So once again, if you keep, keep take, taking out chunks of it, you'll find the pressure will just keep on going up and up. And whenever you use a volume pump on it, you'll just get more and more out of it. So the tank with a pipe, with a pipe valve, a passive pipe valve, to another pipe and another tank. They're all got the same volumes in them. One's pressurized, one's empty. Now the so graph is of the pressure in that one. Graph on this side of the pressure in that one. The graph in the middle is the pressure difference between the two. Right, so we throw the valve. We'll have 500 kilopascals of pressure pushing gas from one side to the other. As that one fills up, the gas pre the pressure Pushing it across will become less and less, so we expect the flow to be less and less. So, we're ready. Fire. So we immediately have a spike on one side. It's dropping. It goes up to 130. We can see now that the pressure is changing. It is not, not proceeding at a straight line. That is because the driving force between the two of them is now reducing, so the flow rate is becoming less and less. So that's as expected. The pressure difference, as it equalises, it's just pumping less and less. The flow is getting slower and slower as the gas, as the driving force, the pressure difference, becomes less and less. They will eventually equalise between the two of them there. Now you must keep in mind that we actually have uh, four atmospheric elements here. Uh, we are just measuring from the pipes, so we're just measuring the difference between these two objects here. The tanks will also have the same effect happening in them, which will further slow down the process as well, but we're not measuring them here. That is a passive flow. Now if we swap out our valve for a volume pump, we now have an active flow. Now this will be pumping a fixed volume from one side to the other. So once again, the same setup otherwise. This is the pressure in that tank, this is the pressure in that tank, and this is the difference between the two of them. So, if we hit the pump. Once again, our flow starts. Now this one is actually proceeding by a um, a volume now. So as it pumps, it takes a set volume out of that, that that system there. So as that system becomes lower and lower pressure, it's going to take less and less out each time. Now it is restricted in volume, so the passive flow could pass a massive volume because it was not restricted by volume, where this one is restricted by volume, so we can only pass what it has. But as the flow gets lower and lower, it will keep pumping. So that one will get rid of your gases better. Of course, it can now drive it to from a low pressure to a high pressure where the passive one never could, but you are now restricted by volume flows. So that's your basic difference there. Your passive flows are driven by the pressure difference. The active flows are driven by the pressure or driven, driven by the volume. The volume of the pump, the amount it passes will depend on the pressure that's in there because the greater the pressure, the greater the quantity of gas in each unit of volume.
tell it's all good for stuff when it's in the pipe. What happens when your gases are not in the pipe? What happens when they're in, when they're loose in the environment? So, well, it's not really loose in the environment, but we have a cube of gas here. I have put sensors all around the bottom of it. Here are our pressure readings, all the same. So now if I pump gas into there, it should flow in from this corner here and flow around the rest of the room, shouldn't it? Shouldn't it? Let's have a look. We switch it on. They are all exactly the same. Well, this is because outside of pipes, all the gas calculations are calculated on the large grids. Um, so, once again, as I said, when they're building this game, they've had to make some compromises to make it run at a reasonable pace. That's one of the compromises they've had to make. If they tried to calculate that on the small grid, that is basically four small grids across, or three and two halves. So it's essentially 64 times the volume. You'd have 64 times the calculations to try and do that, and the game would just grind to a halt. So our external calculations are done on the large grids. So the same will be with temperature as well, but sort of knowing that, a thing that you can do to help help with speed up things, help with your ventilation, even help with your cooling, is to use your cooling into as many of these large grids as you can. So, for instance, we have two small tanks, both empty at the moment. They both have three active vents hooked to them, just in different arrangements. This one has all three active vents, all in the one large grid. So you can tell where the large grids are by the frame sitting on the floor. So all three of them, all set to inward, all in the one frame. The other one has three vents, all in separate frames. Now they all have seven lengths of pipe attached to them, so they all should be identical systems there. See, they're both empty at the moment. If I click the switch, which is just a batch rider switch on all the active vents, on they all go, and we see one is inflating a lot faster than the other one. That's because it's gaining the atmosphere from a larger area. Now even if I put on, put on our atmospheric sensor, we should say normal atmospheric pressure is 2.75 kilopascals. As we walk up closer, we should see drop, look down to 2 there, in the middle, 246, yeah, depends where you stand. It will be sucking in atmosphere from the surrounding cells to fill this one as it sucks it all out. So this one has much more surrounding cells at which to draw atmosphere from. So though there's still only three, at three vents there, it is drawing the atmosphere from a larger area. Where this one, they all the vents are competing with each other to try and suck in the vent. So you see they've got Three, three millipascals there. Whereas the other ones, if we sit right on top of it, there's six pascals there. So they are creating more suction, but they're creating such more suction all in the one spot. So it's not really getting you much more for your buck there. But there we go. That's how you pressurize it all. So if you are trying to collect atmosphere, spread out your vents. Okay, here's our next one. So here I have a chamber which is just three three grids long. I have a sensor in each grid. Once again, it doesn't matter where in the grid that sensor is because the whole grid is going to be the same. I have a passive vent inside there hooked up to a pa an active vent. Once again, that vent can be anywhere in that cell because that cell will always be the same no matter where you do it. So we're now going to show there will be flow from one cell to the next. This whole th triple group does not have the same pressure. So if we switch on, we'll see there's immediate pressure in the next one, and we have a flow on effect from down here. Now, because we have an active vent, which then pulls gases into the pipe actively, it'll pressurize the pipe. So the pipe will actually be a higher pressure than what we're actually sending into there as well then it is a pressure difference between the pipe and the inside which then drives the gases out through the passive vent 
and then it will be the passive difference between the two the cells which will then drive it into the next cell and the passive difference between these cells will drive it into the last cell so you'll find that there will always be a certain amount of flow there now once again it's probably the, the atmosphere is probably a little bit soupy than what it really is in reality but uh yeah, it's one of those things I don't mind when something goes pear shaped you sort of have a slow motion view so you can really enjoy the splatter as the shit hits the fan and things go really really wrong so yeah there you go so once again once our pressures are up it is still it's still relying on the pressure difference between the cells to transfer it all so just because it's a high pressure doesn't mean it's going to transfer as the next cell very quickly because it is the pressure difference that is doing it. There is still only four kilopascals separating those two. Whether it is four and zero, or whether it is 80 and 76, it's still got the same pressure difference driving the same amount of gas. Oh yeah, so that is, well, not really uncontained, but you know, open air flow. It is still driven by passive movements, and it is calculated in the large grids. So that's, well, that's about our first little attempt at um, atmospherics there. It's just covering the, the flow of gases from one place to another, whether it be a pipe contained within a network or just the free-flowing atmosphere. Uh, I hope that's helped you get a little bit of understanding there. Once again, it's not much. It is very much the basics. So, but all good knowledge starts with the basics. So that's about enough for today. So until next time. Happy building. See ya.